a powerful phrase. We step up and deal with this axis of evil. U.S. Senate Minority Leader using it to describe the rising partnership between China, Russia, and Iran. Why is the strategic partnership between Beijing and Tehran a concern for the U.S.? A look at what's at stake. Dangerous actions at sea. Washington vowing to defend the Philippines against China after Manila said a Chinese ship intentionally collided with its vessels. Global jitters over an ailing Chinese developer, but the firm's woes are being felt far beyond Chinese borders. Who else is taking the impact? What do you think? Let us know below and subscribe if you haven't already. Welcome to China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. A powerful statement from Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell. In an interview with Fox News, he said an axis of evil is posing threats to the United States. And so this is an emergency. It's an emergency that we step up and deal with this axis of evil. China, Russia, Iran. His remarks come amid conflicts unfolding in different parts of the world. In Europe, Russia's invasion of Ukraine is ongoing, while in the Middle East, Israel is at war with Hamas, the terrorist group controlling Gaza. Moving further east, the Chinese Communist Party has vowed to take control of Taiwan by force if necessary. Grant Newsham, senior fellow at the Center for Security Policy, has this to say. Imagine if Iran does something more or if this war in the Middle East expands to include Iran. Uh, suddenly, you're going to have to send an awful lot of the U.S. military there to cover it. The uh, effects on the global economy will be immediate and striking. And we haven't even talked about Asia yet. So America is being sort of forced to look at a number of very serious wars at the same time and to be involved in them uh, to some degree or the other. And any degree is too much. Moran Newsham's remarks coming later on China in Focus. As for Beijing, its nuclear weapons stockpile is growing faster than Pentagon projections. According to the Defense Department estimates, it has over 500 warheads under its belt as of May. Former President George W. Bush used the phrase axis of evil 12 years ago in the wake of 9-11. He was referring to North Korea, Iran and Iraq at the time. Authoritarian axis, a powerful phrase now making a return as global concerns rise. Earlier this year, Andrea Kendall Taylor, a senior fellow at the Center for a New American Security Think Tank, described China, Russia and Iran as the new authoritarian axis. Here's more on her remarks. On the surface, China and Iran appears unlikely allies. The Chinese Communist Party pushes an atheist society, while Iran is a strictly Islamic country. Senior fellow at the Center for a New American Security, Andrea Kendall Taylor shed light on what led to the partnership and warned of a magnified effect, saying, by working together, the challenges they pose collectively add up to be more than the sum of their parts in any one individual challenge if they were working on their own. China and Iran have a common enemy, the United States. What's more, China needs Iranian oil. The latest milestone in their friendship stretches back to 2021, when China and Iran signed a strategic partnership agreement. The whooping 25-year deal included both economic and military cooperation. It's also part of Beijing's Belt and Road Initiative, a massive infrastructure project believed to spread Beijing's influence outside its borders. Chinese media commented on the agreement at the time, saying the two countries share an adversary, the group of Western powers led by the United States. How else do China and Iran help each other? One of the most important ways Beijing supports Tehran is through buying up its oil. The U.S. imposed sanctions on Iran's oil sector in 2020 for backing the Quds Force, a terrorist organization in the Middle East. But China continued its fuel purchases, meaning the money kept flowing too. The Chinese ambassador to Iran said in 2021 that China was the only country that still bought oil from Iran. According to Kepler, a platform for global trade intelligence, almost 90 percent of Iranian oil went to China as of last month. Officially, China denies buying the fuel from Iran. Besides oil, the two countries are believed to collaborate on weapons, too. Reports have accused Beijing of helping Iran's nuclear program by transferring technology and equipment. That's despite Western attempts to rein in the country's warheads. In 2015, Iran signed a deal with several world powers, including the U.S. and China, 
Iran promised to restrict its nuclear program in exchange for relief from U.S. sanctions. Former President Trump canceled the deal in 2018. He said it failed to curtail Iran's nuclear program, that the country managed to circumvent the sanctions. Under the Biden administration, the U.S. is now trying to revive the deal. Next, a glimpse into the China-Russia relationship. The two countries are believed to be in the golden age of relations. Right before Russia invaded Ukraine in February of last year, Chinese leader Xi Jinping met with Russian President Putin in Beijing. China declared its friendship with Russia had no limits. That friendship was partially linked to energy. They signed a number of agreements during the visit, including a new gas deal. Under it, Russia would supply over 350 billion cubic feet of gas per year to China via a new pipeline from Russia's Far East. The Ukraine war boosted energy cooperation between the two countries even further. China imported a record volume of Russian oil in the first half of this year, while the West reduced energy imports from Russia and sanctioned the country. The result? China, as the world's second largest economy, could stockpile cheaper oil. The two countries started their energy partnership about 10 years ago. In 2014, China and Russia signed a gas deal for $400 billion over 30 years, bringing them closer together as they look to counter the West. As for the Ukraine war, China has not condemned Russia's invasion so far. The U.S. believes China is willing to supply weapons to Moscow. Intelligence reports cite a leaked document as saying China planned to send military equipment to Russia disguised as civilian goods. Beijing denied the accusation. A string of naval confrontations between China and the Philippines ending in a collision. The Philippines reports that a Chinese Coast Guard ship engaged in dangerous blocking maneuvers that led to a crash with one of its ships. Let's zoom in. China and the Philippines traded accusations over a collision in disputed waters of the South China Sea on Sunday as Chinese vessels blocked Philippine boats supplying forces there. Armed forces of the Philippines released this video showing the Chinese vessel grazing the hull of the Philippines boat. The collision occurred during the Philippines resupply mission to troops stationed on a rusted World War II era transport ship used as an outpost on the shoal. China's Coast Guard said they were lawfully blocking the boat from transporting illegal construction materials to the warship. Manila responded by condemning in the strongest degree the dangerous blocking maneuvers of the Chinese vessel. We are here to really decry in the strongest possible terms this egregious violation and illegal act within the 200 nautical mile exclusive economic zone and the obfuscation of the truth by China's distorting the story to fit its own ends. The Filipinos are, have been incredibly brave and really set a, the standard for what countries ought to do when faced with Chinese pressure like this. Uh, they have publicized exactly what the Chinese are doing. The U.S. sided with the Philippines, offering support to its ally. In a statement on Sunday, the U.S. State Department said China's actions amounted to repeated harassment in the South China Sea and that they were dangerous and unlawful. Beijing claims sovereignty over almost the entire South China Sea, including parts of the exclusive economic zones of Brunei, Indonesia, Malaysia, the Philippines, and Vietnam. The Permanent Court of Arbitration in 2016 said China's claims had no legal basis. Smaller investments in a brand new strategy. China is throwing in another $100 billion into its Belt and Road Initiative. It's an ambitious global infrastructure program that critics say aims to spread Beijing's influence overseas. According to experts, the new spending is a wind down from previous years. The goal to pivot its focus towards, quote, small yet smart projects. More specifically, lower cost and environment friendly projects. Over the last decade, China has handed out nearly one trillion dollars in loans to mostly developing nations, building roads, bridges, ports and railways. But many of those construction projects ended up in vain as countries were left saddled with mounting debt. Western leaders have criticized the Belt and Road as debt-trapped diplomacy. Some notable recipients of the initiative, Russia, Iran, Palestine, and Afghanistan. One significant example, the regime signed off a $400 billion comprehensive strategic partnership deal with Iran. 
That number totals 10 percent of China's Belt and Road budget. Beijing's recent actions against foreign firms have a new target, a critical Apple iPhone supplier called Foxconn. Insiders cite political motives linked to Taiwan's upcoming elections. Let's take a look. Shares in iPhone maker Foxconn tumbled on Monday. They fell as much as 3 percent in morning trade. The slide followed a weekend report that the firm faces investigation by watchdogs in China. That includes tax audits and probes over land use. Foxconn said in a statement Sunday that legal compliance was a fundamental principle and it would actively cooperate with the relevant authorities. The Taiwan-based firm makes most iPhones at a factory in China's Henan province. It employs around 200,000 people there, but also has smaller plants in the south of the country. On Monday, it declined to comment further on the reports. But it all comes less than three months before Taiwan votes in presidential and parliamentary elections. Foxconn's billionaire founder, Terry Goh, is among those running. And a new development in the diplomatic thaw between Australia and China. Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese says a deal has been struck with Beijing. That's to push for a settlement of a World Trade Organization dispute over wine trade between the countries. The breakthrough may clear the way for the resumption of imports worth $800 million a year. That was before Beijing imposed tariffs on Australian wine in 2020. China previously lifted import curbs on other Australian goods, including coal, timber and barley. Albanese also said he would travel to China in November to meet with leader Xi Jinping. It will be the first trip by an Australian prime minister to China since 2016. Albanese revealed that plan just hours before flying to the U.S. to meet President Joe Biden. It's in Australia's interest to have good relations with China and uh, certainly though my focus uh, the coming days uh, will be very much on the, uh, the visit uh, to the United States uh, with Australia's uh, closest partner uh, talking about the future of our alliance. Albanese referred to AUKUS, the security partnership between the U.S., Australia and the U.K. He said the future of the alliance was built on shared values, commitment to democracy and global stability. Under the trilateral pact, the U.S. and Britain will cooperate to provide Australia with a fleet of nuclear-powered submarines. That aims to counter a more assertive China in the Indo-Pacific region. More market jitters for Beijing as ailing property developer Country Garden sparks global concerns. That's over whether the giant is headed for default. But the impact could reach far beyond the Chinese market. Here's the story of one Australian suburb that got caught in the crossfire. Susie Brandstater is a long way from China. She's a local politician in the small Australian town of Wilton, about an hour outside Sydney. And yet she's feeling the effects of trouble at the giant Chinese property developer Country Garden, which was supposed to build a huge new residential community in Wilton. Now, to me, when you are building a new city from scratch, greenfield development, there is room and time to get it right and have all that infrastructure in place before the people come. The Wilton Greens development was supposed to feature 3,600 homes. But four years after it was announced, fewer than 50 houses are under construction. The promised parks, sports fields and school haven't materialised. And now Country Garden has put most of the project on the market. It all comes as the firm struggles with its debts. This week it missed bond interest payments, putting it on the brink of default. And the fallout reaches well beyond China. In Wilton, quantity surveyor Stuart Bullivant says it's literally causing a stink. As you can see, this construction already started. However, the infrastructure hasn't been provided as promised, meaning that the sewerage is draining into a tank, which means that there'll be multiple truck movements all through day and night to empty out the wastewater because there is no on-site solution. The problems are symbolic of the changing fortunes at Country Garden and Chinese rivals. They borrowed on a massive scale to fund huge developments at home and abroad. But such firms have struggled since Beijing moved to rein in the borrowing spree. 
Now creditors are circling, seeking emergency debt restructuring at Country Garden. The people of Wilton would just like the homes they were promised and a sewage system to go with it. That's all for today's China in Focus on YouTube. We're now sharing a shortened version of our program here. Here's what to look out for in our second half. New threats facing the United States. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell saying China, Russia and Iran make up a new axis of evil. What threats do they pose to the U.S.? And how should Washington respond? We spoke to Grant Newsham, retired Marine Colonel and Senior Fellow at the Center for Security Policy for Insight. The full episode is available on our partner platform, Epic TV. To sign up, click the link down below. Thanks for watching China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. See you tomorrow.